Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel with Just Another Fan TV, man. Back at you another video at the content. This video, go ahead and smash that like button at the content of this channel. Go ahead and subscribe, man. Look. All right, man. We are um, one day away from Ravens uh, kicking off their season, at least their preseason, that, that is. And uh, so I wanted to get four Ravens players to watch out for during this uh, week one game versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, now, we know the stars and the big guys aren't going to be playing. You know, your Lamar Jacksons, your uh, Mark Andrews, guys along that line, Ronnie Stanley, not going to be playing. So, you know, we got to give us some people to watch, right? Uh, I'm going to be tuning into the game so I can get my thoughts and my opinions on it. So these are four players that when I tune into the game that I'm going to be uh, particularly looking out for watching them play, all right? So let's start it off, man. Uh, one of the major things of uh, training camp and one of the stars of training camp so far when it comes to the guys that's been on that second, third team offense, um, and that's been Keaton Mitchell, right? So running back, um, Eastern Carolina, undrafted. Uh, let's, let's let's get the height and weight here. I believe he's about 5'8". Hold on. So they got him listed as 5'8", 191. All right, so smaller running back, scat back, jittery kind of guy. Uh, but blazing fast, can catch the ball at the backfield, which is something that he's been doing a lot. And when I said one of the things at training camp, it's been that, uh, running backs catching the football. So that's also uh, a player I'm looking out for, but it's also tied into an offensive theme I'm looking out for. Now, we might not have the starters out there, but it's still going to be Ty Muck and calling the plays on offense. I want to see how, you know, you're not going to show a lot of preseason, especially preseason week one, but just to see how the offense is ran, right? Um, do we see uh, running backs catching swings, getting out on routes? How are the running backs being utilized in the passing game? And if Keaton Mitchell is one of those guys that's going to be primarily utilizing that passing game because he's had a really good training camp to start off with. Uh, he's been hard to tackle. He's been hard to guard. I mentioned that speed that he has. So he's a guy that I'm looking out for because, listen, we know what's going on with J.K. Dobbins. Um I'm still un, uh, under the understanding that J.K. Dobbins will be back before the regular season starts. Um, that's still my understanding of it. I mean, until that changes, that's, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, but Keith Mitchell could do enough to where the Ravens feel like they have to keep him around, right? They don't typically carry four running backs active day roster. Um, they still might not do it. But right now, to me, it's, it's between him and Melvin Gordon, right? You know, you got J.K., you got Gus, you got Justice Hill. Your spots are pretty much solid, solid right there. Um, will you be able to do enough to make the Ravens decide enough decide to say, hey, look, we got to keep a fourth running back and that running back be Keaton Mitchell, all right? So I'm looking out for him. Uh, I'm excited to see him play, honestly. Uh, when I did see him, I was at the training camp and I was at the stadium practice. I mean, he is fast. He is electric. So I want to see that in a real game action when the pass is on and, you know, the other team is trying to, you know, to take you out, right? How does he play in those kind of circumstances, all right? So we'll do two offense, two defense. So that's your first offensive player right there. Uh, first defensive player that I want to talk about is another uh, undrafted rookie. And this one is Jaquan Amos, right? Safety. He's wearing number 37. Oh, I didn't mention Keith Mitchell's number. Keith Mitchell's wearing 34, if anybody doesn't know. He's wearing 34 out there. All right, but Jaquan Amos wearing number 37. Uh, I want to break him up because when you have a safety who constantly finds himself around the football, um... It's something that, you know, you got to bring your attention towards, right? Uh, I believe he has two interceptions during training camp, a couple of pass breakups. Uh, he's been one of those guys that's been in the right place at the right time more than, on multiple occasions. So we can't just say his luck, right? So now I want to see how does he play out there in a real live game situation. And um, that's what I'm looking out for with Jaquan Amo. So six foot, 196, so close to 200 pounds safety. Uh, can he do it all? Can he tackle? Can he fill the gaps in the run game? And also, can he uh, get his hands on the football? So they have him listed as um, a strong safety on the depth chart. I believe they have him listed as a strong safety. So we'll see how he plays when he, when we go against this game versus the Eagles. Uh, but that's a guy that I'm looking out for because, man, listen, the most vi well, one of the most valuable things a defender can do is take the ball away from the offense. So whether that's an interception, whether that's forcing a fumble, whatever the way that you get the ball out of the offensive player's hands is a valuable trait. Now, the Ravens are pretty much um, solidified at the safety position in terms of guys breaking in and starting. You know, you got Kyle Hamilton, you got Marcus Williams. Geno Stone's been out for a while with injury, but they haven't said this anything serious. They could be taking it uh, uh, cautiously with him. And then, obviously, you got Brandon Stevens as well, who's focused on more of a safety role. But Jaquan Amos could be one of those guys where you play enough, you stick around. Then next year, 
you could be in Geno Stone's spot because Geno Stone's on a one-year deal. And who knows if Geno Stone's going to want to keep coming back, coming back to be a backup on a one-year deal. He may eventually say, I want to go somewhere else. And if he plays well enough, maybe somebody else gives him a chance to have a bigger role in their, on their defense. So Jaquan Amos might not be playing for a spot this year, but he plays well this year in preseason. He stays on. Then next year he gets to compete for that backup spot. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's all important. It's all connected. So I'm interested to see how Jaquan Amos plays. And um, they're going to keep an eye out for him, number 37. All right. Now, uh, second offensive player we got here. Uh, and that's that, that's going to be Big Sala, man. Uh, left guard, rookie, six-round pick uh, out of Oregon. Uh, they got him listed at 6'5", 325. And that's who I'm looking out for, okay? And the reasons is obviously quite simple. is the fact that he's in a the left guard competition right now with John Simpson. The first training camp um, roster came out. John Simpson was listed as the starting left guard. All right. Now, a lot can change between preseason week one and preseason week two. So, Salah's going to have an opportunity to play well. Now, the Eagles aren't going to play a lot of their starters, if any of their starters. Uh, but the Eagles have one of the deepest D lines in the NFL. So, he's going to get good competition, good work, no matter who he's playing against. All right. The Eagles are one of those teams that I kind of wish the Ravens were like, where you, they, they bring in waves of pass rushers. Just got, you know, four or five, six guys who get after the pass, right? Um, so, while they might not be playing their top-notch starters, like your, um, you know, Fletcher Cox, your, your Jordan Davis, whoever you guys on the inside, well, Jordan Davis probably played, but, you know, your, your guys on the inside, uh, even Hassan Reg on the outside, they might not be playing those kind of guys, but they will still have a rotation of, of good defenders that they'll bring into the game that will give uh, Salah some work. So uh, well, I'm interested to see how he handles that, right? Uh, I'm assuming John Simpson will play as well at some point because the Ravens will have enough offensive linemen just to not play John Simpson. Um, so they're going to have a battle back and forth. Who can play better? Uh, it won't be the end-all, be-all, but it will be an important step in who wins that competition. Hold on. And obviously, Vasala, this is obviously going to be his first NFL game as well. So his first NFL action, um, that's a big deal as well. So just to get out acclimated, acclimated, excuse me, to the NFL game, whether even if it's preseason, it's still going to be a step up from playing college football. All right. So I'm looking off Vasala to see how he handles himself because he's in a real competition to start for the Ravens. And um, that's probably the weakest spot on the Ravens offensive line right now. So somebody needs to, needs to jump up and win the job. All right, my last guy um, that we're going to talk about, one more defensive player. Uh, he's been on the Ravens for two years now, and that's Darius Washington, right? The reason I want to talk about Darius Washington is for multiple reasons. One, um, well, he's having a really good training camp, right? He's in there making plays. That's one of the guys that I said look out for. Um, it's not like a secret or anything. Like he's, If you've been watching the Ravens for the last couple of years in preseason training camp, uh, Darius Washington's always flashed and made plays, but he just never got a chance to have a lot of, a lot of time on the field. It just hasn't happened for him. Um, but this could be the changing point right here for him right now. So, that's what I'm looking out for. And then the second reason is that the Ravens have a lot of injuries right now in that secondary, right? It's particularly at the cornerback spot. Now, Darius Washington is listed as a safety, but if he's playing that nickel role, um, you know, he's, he's a DB, you know what I mean? So the Ravens have, I mean, I went over yesterday, Jalen Armour Davis, Arthur Marlette, uh, Rocky Seam, uh, Pepe Williams was put out on the cart. You know, we don't know the extent of that injury, whether how serious it is or whatever. Um, I think I'm missing one more person. So they have a lot of guys right now that are currently injured in the cornerback room. And a lot of guys that was going to take cornerback three kind of snaps. Now that job that Audrey Washington was already playing well, now he gets to have that almost uncontested and really make his name for himself. Okay, so um, this is a big game for him, honestly, right? Um, last year versus the Cardinals in the preseason, he had a good game. I'm looking for him to do the same thing versus the Eagles, right? Like I said, the preseason won't be the end-all, be-all, especially preseason week one. But for him to have a, a good game while these other people are injured and not getting the reps is going to be very vital in the Ravens' decision-making process of do we put our Darius Washington out there as our number three cornerback right there. So um, I'm interested to see how he plays. Every time he's played, I've liked what he's done. He's 5'8", 177 pounds. That's what they got him listed as. Uh, but... He, he's physical, right? He, he comes up, he'll tackle you, but he can also cover. So and he's a good athlete. So I, he does a lot of good things on the field. So I'm very, very interested in seeing what Darius Washington has for us. Um, starting for the Ravens right now. Uh, in my mind, he's technically cornerback three with all the entries right now. I mean, you just got to lay it out there. So 
how does he take to that role? And uh, so these are the four guys I'm looking out for, man. So you got uh, on offense, you got Big Sala, you got Keaton Mitchell out the backfield. On defense, you got two guys in secondary, Jaquan Amos and um, uh, Darius Washington. Uh, name me some players, some players that maybe you're looking out for, and uh, you know, drop those names in the comment, man. We'll get out of here. But it's Gabriel, it's on Fan TV. I'm out.